We have a grooved track, a wrap actually piece of shell standard, and a ball that we're going to allow to roll down the track. We're going to uh, mark the positions of that ball at more or less equal time intervals, uh, time intervals indicated by these numbers here, or the, the clock times indicated by these numbers. Um, takes, you know, we start here at, the, uh, at one tick, at four ticks, we're here at eight ticks, at 12 ticks of the clock, at 16, 20, and 24. Uh, we get data for the count or the time, the number of clicks, uh, verse, uh, and position. So we have position versus clock time, position measured in centimeters. Um, we get average rate of change of position with respect to clock time. We graph that. We do a best fit to that and interpret that as a velocity function uh, that tells us the speed of the ball as a function of time. So uh, when the ball gets here, it should have taken 20 clicks and should be moving at 0.10 uh, centimeters per click times t. Uh, plus the 0 0.05. And again, uh, the details, we go into a lot of detail. There's uh, a better part of an hour of video on this thing. We also then graph the position versus clock time, and we obtain a quadratic fit. Uh, we can see, if we look at these numbers, if you just do a quick graph, jot down a quick graph of these numbers, um, position versus clock time position, clock time, uh, you'll find that we have an upward curvature to that graph, making it plausible that there's a quadratic function that fits this data. And uh, I would recommend that you just take this data, confirm that these are the average rates of change. Uh, the numbers I've got here are the changes in the y coordinate from 20, for say from 32 to 37, the change is 5, indicating a 5 centimeter difference in position. Um, and between the corresponding clock times, 4, set, four counts and 8 counts, uh, 4 ticks and 8 ticks, if you like, there's a difference of 4 ticks. And the difference, uh, except for the first interval, is always four ticks here. The difference is here, increase, giving you increasing average rate of change of y with respect to t. Um, and so I'd, I'd recommend that you uh, actually sketch out those graphs. Uh, think about this a little bit before you uh, get into the videos. Uh, this is going to be followed by uh, a more extensive summary, uh, including more of the analysis. Uh, we get a kind of a surprising uh, set a, a result at the end, um, giving us really good consistency uh, with our assumption that this is quadratic and that the uh, rate of change versus clock time should be linear. Much more as we go on. Uh, the summary uh, the summary runs uh, about 20 minutes, um, and then the actual discussion probably runs uh, double that. So. Uh, Proceed as you will.